For this video, I'm going to show you how to create a design that we could cut out on the laser as a stencil or cut out on the vinyl cutter as a, a decal, uh, you know, a water bottle decal, a vinyl decal for a window, uh, or a t-shirt design. So let's just set up a new file here. I'm going to call it basketball logo. Uh, we want to make sure that we are once again in the basic RGB for the laser, and we're going to set up our units again I'm gonna choose millimeters and I'm gonna go with a uh, maybe a 300 by about a uh, we'll say 300 by 300 millimeters for now I think that will be uh, a little bit big but we can do that so 300 by 300 millimeter and basically when you're designing for uh, a decal or a, a t-shirt design or a stencil all we're doing is creating very simple um, color schemes that are black and white and actually in the end it's just going to be red cut lines um, and so you don't want to look for really complex uh, designs or pictures that have a lot of color because it, for this we can really just keep part of the material and cut part of the material away so you can use all the different drawing tools and techniques that we showed you before to create your own custom designs and certainly at a more advanced level that's what we would expect but a great way to start is to bring in and find um, images from the internet that you could copy and use so I went through and just searched out you know basketball icons again try and search stuff out that's kind of black and white and fairly simple in its design because it will be easier in terms of the process so um, you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna grab this guy here this is like the Michael Jordan uh, NBA icon kind of thing and so when you find an image that you like you're gonna save that image and you're gonna stick it somewhere uh, and name it and then what we need to do is place this image into our current canvas or artboard. So we're going to go file place and you're going to go look for that image and you're going to find the image that you want and you're going to place that image. And so what happens when you bring this image in, all right, is that it's a it's a PNG, it's not a vector uh, or it's a JPEG. And so we need to turn this into vectors that we can actually manipulate. So to do that, we're going to go and use this trace image option and if you select the arrow we can go down and um, we're going to use a black and white logo setting for this because we just need two colors so when I create a black and white logo I'll get a vectorized design sometimes it doesn't turn out exactly the way you want and so by opening up the trace image uh, panel here and expanding it to the advanced we can change how the picture might look through these various settings so threshold has to do with what it recognizes as light and dark okay and so the more you kind of change that the more resolution you might get on your image you can also change the number of paths and change the number of corners okay sometimes you're just gonna find that the image that you want is, isn't going to work and in that case I would really recommend looking for a new image rather than playing with one forever that doesn't gonna isn't gonna work so I'm just gonna go and place a different image here that I grabbed earlier so I'm gonna grab this basketball image and same process we're gonna go here we're gonna go black and white logo and I'm getting a much better um, version of this so just messing with my settings a bit until I'm you know kind of happy with how it might look I'll work with that um, you will notice that if you bring in images with text the text almost never turns out properly so I would strongly recommend that you actually just redo the text manually uh, after you bring in the image so I'm happy with that general design and once you are happy with your design you go to the expand button and this creates individual um, vectors or shapes of each of the different parts of the image and we're going to right click and ungroup this so that we can separate the different parts of the image so there's a background here and I can delete that this basketball um, lettering I'm not going to use that uh, the basketball itself I am going to group it back together and 
I'm just going to make it bigger. So one of the beautiful things about vectorizing is that I can expand it to any size that I want and I will not lose the quality or the resolution of the design. Okay. Um, let's say I want to put some text onto here. So I'm going to go with RTHS hoops or something like that. Again, this is up to you. Uh, I'm going to go and just select maybe a different font. All right, so for this, I just created a, I just found a font. It doesn't really matter. Again, that's that's up to you. And uh, I'm going to take this font and I'm going to put this over top of the basketball. Now, I can't see it because the font is black. So I'm just going to make it white and stick that over the top. Now, one of the challenges with fonts that you should be aware of is that if a different machine doesn't have the exact same font that you are using, then that will be a problem and we'll have to go and try and find it and it can sometimes cause problems. But a way around that, once you have your font um, the way you like it, if you click on it and right click and go to create outlines, uh, you can also find that under the type tab and create outlines. What it does is it creates the outline of the font to be vectors. It no longer sees it as um, it no longer sees it as uh, lettering, but just as shapes, okay? Um, and so once you've got this the way you want it, okay, there's a couple things we need to do. So um, we need to get rid of the fill, and we need to add a red stroke of 0 0.5, okay? We'll do the same thing with the RTHS hoops ones. We're just going to add a... 0.5 stroke to that all right and once you have a design that looks kind of like this you're really ready to go to the production and laser this out and see what happens now with the lasering when we cut this out of paper these islands on the O and or the O's and the R they're going to kind of fall away because there's nothing to hold them in place however if you do produce this on a for a vinyl decal or a t-shirt, there's backing that will hold those in place and so you're not limited uh, by pieces sort of disappearing as they will in the laser. Once you've got your design perfected, you can save that and you can uh, put it into the uh, lasering folder and we'll run it out on some uh, cardstock to start with and then from there you can finish it off as either a basic stencil or uh, potentially transfer it to a t-shirt or a uh, decal for a water bottle, something like that.